Hi everyone, I'm Scott McClure, your host of Wheat Speak with West Bread Wheat. In this series, we bring in industry experts to answer your audience submitted questions. Today, we're preparing for spring wheat planting by discussing seeding rates. We have three guest speakers to guide us through this topic. Westbred Technical Product Managers Grant Meering and Trenton Stanger, as well as Joel Ransom, Extension Agronomist at North Dakota State University. Let's get started. Joel, what's one piece of advice you'd offer to growers in your area as planting approaches? Well, my recommendation would be that uh, farmers carefully consider seeding based on numbers of viable seeds rather than on a bushel rate. Thanks, Joel. Grant or Trent, anything to add? I would encourage you to really get prepped and plant your spring wheat timely and early so that we can give it the best chance to have a optimum yields. I advise growers now to really do their homework. Our growers have a lot of choices here in my region, you know, whether they want to grow a soft white, a hard red, or a hard white. And then once they figure out the class they want to grow, you know, do the homework on the variety that would fit best in their situation, whether it be their management practices, whether it may be diseases they face on a year-in, year-out basis. And what's the number one mistake you see growers make when it comes to seeding rates? For me, really, one mistake that I've seen over and over is that growers in wheat tend to just plant a single seeding rate across many different varieties that they have on their farm. Uh, Often in my area, it's two to three, maybe even four spring wheat varieties that are genetically different. And and I encourage them to think about the differences that those wheats have phenotypically and plant different seeding rates, maybe varying it by as much as a half a million seeds per acre below and above their optimum seeding rate to really fine tune each variety for where it should be. Yeah, that's really good advice. I I think the other thing would be that, you know, the the tendency is as we get into these higher yielding environments that growers think they need to put in more seed than they have in the past. And I I think some of our recent data would suggest that uh, that may not be the case. In fact, in some of our highest yielding varieties, it might be that we back off a little bit uh, on the seeding rate. You know, I think one of the mistakes I hear from growers is that they just seem to be fixed on a seeding rate from year in and year out. And the seed they're purchasing can vary by many thousands on how many seeds per pound there is in a purchase uh, in a particular variety or a particular even lot of which they purchase. So one thing I like to remind them is that, hey, make sure that you get from your seed supplier that seeds per pound so that you can accurately recalibrate your planting equipment so that you're getting that seeds per acre that you want to or that's optimal for that variety that you've chosen and you've purchased. So it sounds like growers shouldn't use the same seeding rate from year to year. If you are planting the same wheat variety, let's just say you plan to grow it four years in a row. Each year you grow that variety, you should know a little bit more about that variety. And I would recommend trying to tweak your seeding rates up and down slightly based on what you saw out in the field, based on lodging and yield for that variety. Have some fun with it. You only get so many chances to grow a crop and only so many chances to grow a specific variety. You can always improve the seeding rate. What other factors should growers take into consideration when choosing seeding rates? I see one of the driving factors really is the environment and the available water that my growers have um, that really affects what their seeding rate may be. And that can really change across an environment. Also, their planting date. You know, are they going to go early normal or are they going to go a later date, you know, depending on on what they have to get in and what the weather gives them. Varieties can also play a role in that uh, seeding rate determination. Uh, Certainly those varieties that tend to lodge, I would say they need to be in a higher yielding environment. You probably need to be backing off a bit on your seeding rate. And uh, those that tiller well, the data would suggest there's no need to put extra seed out there because uh, the plant will do very well. In fact, maybe better at a lower seeding rate than going over the top. Joel, you're absolutely right. Growers realize how their varieties stand up, their lodging ability, their straw strength, and they are thinking about their seeding rates based on that one single factor. You talk about tillering, and it's not always the fact that growers know the tillering ability of their varieties. But what growers do know is how that variety ends up filling the rows towards the middle of the season on the seeding spacing that they're on. And so I think that when they think about how a particular variety fills the rows, They can adjust their seeding rate up and down based on that to try and get the right number of heads out there that will accurately fill the rows and and capture as much photosynthesis and sunlight as they can. Spring is off to a wet start in many places. If planting is delayed because of weather or other reasons, how should seeding rates be adjusted? 
For Joel and I in, the, in our area, the Northern Plains, we often talk about a rule of thumb of like 1% per day increasing your seeding rate every day that you're delayed beyond your optimum planting date. As you delay your wheat seeding, you need to plant more seeds because you're going to have a shorter growing season, more heat, which produces less tillers on the wheat plant. Would you agree, Joel? Sure. Yeah, I, I think that the data would support, uh, you know, going with a little higher seeding rate as you get uh, later in the season. However, uh, that's not going to solve all your problems. You're not going to catch up on yield just by putting more seed out if you seed late, uh, but it will help reduce some of the losses that are associated with uh, later seeding. You know, it's understanding, you know, that you're going to have to increase your seeding rate as you get later in the season, but also take uh, your variety into consideration. You know, there are certain varieties that are more disease prone if uh, if they're maturing later in the season, um, especially in my area, we have uh, incidents of, of scab if the weather conditions are right. So they may want to uh, consider a different variety um, if they're going to be planting a little bit later. Thank you, gentlemen. Finally, where can growers go to learn more about optimizing seeding rates? If you do purchase a Westbred variety, ask your seed supplier for that weed insight sheet that would provide you with the recommended optimum seeding rate, um, not only in seeds per acre, but also in pounds per acre for that variety that you've purchased. That wheat insight sheet that your Westbred seed supplier will hand or email or text to every person who's purchasing a Westbred variety has great information on there for growers to plant the correct bushels per acre or seeds per acre of all of the different wheat varieties that they could purchase from Westbred. And uh, certainly the extension specialists are available to provide some additional information if there are uh, outstanding questions. It is not too late to go and look up some information on seeding rates and make a better decision for your seeding rates and your varieties in 2018. That concludes this segment of Wheat Speak with Westbred Wheat. Thank you so much to our experts. If you have questions about seeding rates or other management practices, be sure to submit them at westbred.com slash wheatspeak.